But uh, in my presentation, I just want to give a summary of what theme four is, indigenous communities and the social economy, and share some of the research that we've been doing over the past few years, and as well as some of the preliminary uh, results. Um, my own personal bias, uh, I think this component of the social economy in the North is what really is distinctive about the Northern social economy. Granted, that's a very biased, uh, bi biased view. Um, I, I hope you can make this out. The, the areas that we focus on in this, in this theme that I have the privilege to try to coordinate is the very complex relationship between wildlife harvesting, subsistence economies, uh, wage labor, the, the critical importance of sharing and reciprocity both within communities and between communities, and the policy regimes that often dictate how these different uh, activities are, are conducted. Uh, hopefully, by exploring this complexity, we can come uh, or drive some more effective policy options that government can take into account as uh, hopefully they're driving more informed public policy in the future about these very important economic activities with their social attributes. We've been able to uh, support, I think, some fascinating research projects from, from Labrador all the way to Old Crow, and I think we've gained some really important insights on the complexity between mixed economies uh, in, in the North. We have a hunter support program uh, project looking at the different ways different uh, land claims organizations and northern governments are facilitating uh, hunters' access to the land, which then feeds back into community well-being and food security. We are examining the social economy through the lens of natural resource management, specifically looking at the role of co-management organizations across the North, uh, the numerous uh, number of co-management organizations across the North. We're also looking at the gender aspects about that, that involvement and how very few women are involved in co-management boards uh, in, the, in the territories. Food security across uh, uh, and the cross-board dimensions of Wutukwachin social economy. I won't steal uh, Toby Jean's thunder on this one. She'll be presenting later on this project that we've been having going on in, in Old Crow in partnership with uh, Arctic Health Research Network, Yukon. It's, a, it's been a great partnership. Uh, subsistence in the social economy in the Nazivut, something I've been directly involved in, as well as a couple other cross uh, linked uh, projects, impact of participation in the wage economy, uh, headed up by Brenda Parley at University of Alberta, and the history of the mixed economy and policy initiatives, headed up by uh, Francis Abel at Carleton University. So we have a number of projects going on across the north, and I just wanted to share just a, a sampling of some of, the, some of the results that we have to give you a sense of what we're thinking about and, and what, what we're starting to learn. And just, I've been working in Labrador for quite a few years, and, and I just wanted to share some of the, you know, some of what we've found. And you know, there is this, this, I, well, it's been around for a long time that subsistence production is, in some cases, dead or it, or it's dying. And we certainly found that not to be true along the Labrador coast. And you can see, in terms of household participation rates, people are still harvesting wild foods, possibly not to the extent that they they once did, but it's still a vital component of local and household economies, you know, upwards of 98% in Postville. Those households are involved in subsistence harvesting. The time allocation that men and women are, are, are devoting to harvesting wild foods and also engaged in uh, wage earning activities, two self-supporting activities um, you know, that, that support one another. Male, and this is, this is not devoted specifically, the, the amount of time, you know, females uh, in Nunatsivut aren't spending 37 weeks devoted exclusively to harvesting wild foods, but 37 weeks out of the year, they're engaged in harvesting wild foods, whether the processing or sharing or, or hunting or, and gathering. So we thought the time allocation was important. We also found that 96% of all households in Nunatsiavut are engaged in food sharing networks. And I'm, I won't walk through this, but what this diagram, probably overly complex diagram shows, is these are just households, and they cooperate quite a bit. And you know, going from a very simple uh, network up above in that left-hand corner, those are four houses linked by kinship that cooperate in sharing foods, sharing income, sharing resources, to, and they work cooperatively. All the way down to what is a very complex network, this, 
involving 13 households centered by two elder households and their families supporting in different ways. And you can see all those other little, little dotted arrows. Those are resources and, and cash and food coming in from other communities. And Toby Jeans will be sharing research later on this afternoon about a very similar dynamic that's going on in Old Crow. So this just shows the, the complexity of household cooperation that goes on, these in, goes on in these communities day in, day out, that often go unobserved. And, and for me, this is the essence of a social economy. Again, this goes back to that first little diagram. This just shows the mix between people who are devoted exclusively to harvesting wild foods, others who are involved in wage labor, and others who have a mix, seasonal employment, and how wage, wage earning, harvesting, and, and sharing all take place in this kind of complex network. Again, often going unobserved, but going on every day. Um, Regional. This is not exclusive to uh, one community. Sharing does not occur just between neighbors, but at least in Nunatsiavut and what we've learned in Old Crow, food sharing extends beyond the community and links regions together. 80 to 82 percent of these sharing networks in Nunatsiavut are, are defined by kinship relationships. So family who might move from, um, um, from Makovic to Winnipeg are still linked through the exchange of, of wild foods. So, what, what we've learned, uh, no doubt, communities in the North have undergone you know, significant change. However, and, and despite the assertions of, of some, wild food harvesting continues to represent an important economic activity, as well as carrying really e or equally important social attributes. Uh, harvesting and distribution of country foods not only fulfills those important economic values, but sustains and contributes to cultural integrity of the communities. Many of most northern communities depend on a mixed economy. Uh, very few rely exclusively on, on wage earning, and probably none uh, rely exclusively on wild food harvesting. By optimizing a range of economic activities, households have successfully incorporated, incorporated wage earning into an overall household uh, um, um, livelihood strategy, incorporating public assistance, wage earning, wild food production. Again, in essence, a social economy. So what does this mean for, for policy uh, development? Well, I, I think any attempt to develop more effective policy in the North must take into a better account the complex relationship between wage earning and wild food production. Uh, they depend on each, uh, each other, and, and we have to design policies that really recognize and take into account the importance of, of wild food wild food production, and not promoting economic activities at odds with those production systems. Uh, this will require an understanding of the complex uh, social, economic, and political interplay that takes place between subsistence and, and, and wage earning, and the importance of reciprocity between households and communities. Subsistence and wage earning are, are, are here to stay, and I think it's going to be critical if we develop more effective social, social economy policies in, in the future, we give the, those two forms of economic activities equal weight in, in future policy development. 